Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Raghav and in today's video I will talk about tensors and why do we use tensors in deep learning specifically. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I have uploaded this uh, Jupyter Notebook to my GitHub repository. I'll paste the link down in the description. You can grab it from there. So before we discuss why we use tensors in deep learning, uh, let's talk about what is a tensor. As per the book definition, tensor is a matrix or vector that lives in a structure connected to other elements of the same structure. This is the important part. So each element in a tensor is connected to other elements of the same structure. So that if one changes, the other will adjust itself so that the overall orientation of the vector space remains the same. So this is a concept that you will need to understand by understanding what is a component and a basis vector. And I can't do justice to that explanation. So I would highly recommend you to watch a YouTube video by Dan Fleisch on tensors. And he has explained it really well what a tensor is. In summary, I have noted down a few points here. You can look at them. So tensors are a combination of components and basis vectors, which makes them so powerful. So the main idea is all observers in all reference frames agree not on the basis vectors, nor on the components but on the combination of components and basis vectors. The reason is basis vectors transforms one way between reference frames and the components transform in just such a way so as to keep the combination of components and basis vectors the same for all observers. It was this characteristics of the tensors that caused Linian Labor who wrote a book called the Einstein Theory of Relativity to call tensors the facts of the universe. I would highly recommend if you want to learn deeper into tensors, you should go and look at this book, page number 127, and you can read more about tensors. You will get a better understanding. But for this video, I'm going to explain why we use tensors in deep learning. So for that, I would take an example of a deep neural network, which has two layers. This is L1 depicted over here in this picture, and this is L2. These are the activations of each layer so 4.58 and 2.4 are the activations for each node in layer 1 and 4.6 18.8 and 1.8 are the activations of layer 2 and over here these numbers are the weight matrix representations so for l1 connected from node 1 to all the nodes these are the weight uh, that gets multiplied uh, that we use to get the new layers activations so I'll explain that in a better way uh, by creating these matrices in Jupyter Notebook. So let's first import our library NumPy and create the L1 activation. So these are the same activations that you saw here, 4.58 and 2.4. So this is a vector of L1 activations. Then we create a weight matrix with the weights of the each connection. Then we create layer 2 activations, which is nothing but the dot product of L1 with W1 to the weight matrix. So we do that dot product and we get this layer 2 activations, which are mentioned here. So this is all plain and simple, but we in deep learning train the network. And for that, we need to change the activations of one layer. So in order to change the activations of one layer, I'll show an example here where I'm changing the layer 1 activations with the, this below transformation so you can see I'm having a activation change matrix A which will transform the L1 activations when I do a dot product with L1 and this will be the new resulting L1 hat new activations of L1 but what will happen is if I use this activations to change L1 the corresponding L2 will also get changed that means we'll have to train the network again in in case when w12 the weight matrix does not behave as a tensor but in tensorflow specifically or any deep learning library the weight matrix behaves like a tensor so what that means is to prevent the retraining of the network the weight matrix adjusts itself in such a way that the activations of l2 do not change so l1 i'm changing it here but l2 will not change because the weight matrix will adjust itself. It will adjust itself by using the inverse of A that I used to transform L1 activations. So in this cell here, I am creating A inverse by using the NumPy library lin 
algebra inverse a and i'm multiplying the weight matrix with this a inverse to get the new weight matrix so what happened here is our weight matrix has adjusted itself so that when uh, when these values of the weight matrix are applied to the l1 hat that we changed the l2 activations remain the same so that's the grand idea of using tensors in deep learning so just to recap the weight matrix behaves like a tensor so that you don't need to retrain the network to calculate the activations of layer subsequent layers if you change the activations of a previous layer and this property of tensors makes it so useful to be used in deep learning world so that's all for this video i know this was a short video and i may not be able to completely explain myself here but if you want to read more or if you have any questions please do uh, write in the comments and i would highly recommend to watch the video by dan flesh which i have linked here you'll get to understand the beauty of tensors and if you want to dig deeper do read this book i'm also going through it right now but i just wanted to share this knowledge with you so that's all for this video guys and uh, please do subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video bye bye